Howdy, Tim Hartman here, Justin Shiner, and we are talking apples, low chill apples, apples with what's growing on in Aggie horticulture. Okay, we're here in College Station. It's about 120 degrees. Well, it feels like it's 120 degrees. Um, this is 2022. This is set to be the hottest June on record. And we're talking about apples, and we have some apples that have been ripening under this intense heat. Everything we're talking about today is low chill apples. So, low chill apples. Medium chill apples, high chill apples. Why don't you? Uh, so what, do, what do you call them low chill? What do you call them low chill? You smell? I would say uh, below 500 hours. Fair enough. So we have a range. We have a row of apples here, and uh, they range in their chilling requirement from probably a couple hundred hours. Some of these are probably, my guess, is approaching a thousand hours. They're very high chill, um, which has some problems, and we'll highlight some of those here in a bit. But uh, as you may or may not know, if you've done a little homework into apples, what you're typically trying to do is match the cold, the chilling that you have in your area to the variety so that it blooms at the correct time and it blooms more synchronously or together all at once. But not too early either. Not too early because then it gets frozen out. And so one of the varieties I have down the row, which we'll look at here in a bit, it's called Anna. And it blooms very early. I feel like every year it gets some freeze to the blooms. Uh, but I still set fruit because I usually get continuous blooms after that fact. Um, I guess before we jump in and we look at some of these varieties, here in the background we're looking at a low chill variety. These apples are just starting to uh, get ripe. This variety right here is called Tropic Sweet. It's a Florida, University of Florida release. And as I was doing my homework, deciding what apples to plant, apples first of all, as you probably know, are not an easy fruit to grow for me. I would say it's probably the equivalent to peaches. Definitely high, yeah, definitely high in that category. Pa pest and disease problems. I, I would say, uh, you know, if you're going to grow apples and you didn't want to control diseases and pests, you may get some fruit, and then there's going to be years where you get zero fruit. Maybe a lot of years where you get zero fruit. So when I was selecting varieties, I wanted uh, disease resistance was one thing. And then number two, I wanted to look at varieties that were low chill. And so we have this combination of both. The low chill varieties, they get their chilling requirement met here in College Station. They bloom all at once. They set fruit. The fruit ripens in this case for these low chill varieties early. Uh, pick the fruit and we're done. I also wanted to extend the harvest window. And so I planted some higher chill varieties. And they bloom later. They bud break later. And then the bloom is spread out over the summer. We actually have some that are still in bloom right now. There's fruit on the plant and they're still in bloom which is awesome from a backyard perspective because you continuously pick fruit. There's a big problem, however, in that fire blight uh, is a continuous problem all summer long because that's the, one of the primary entry points fire blight is through the flowers. So if you get an early bloom when it's cool and it's synchronous, you have less risk of fire blight versus these high chill varieties. Shall we walk down and look at some varieties? Let's go look at I'll hop behind the camera and then you can do the talking. Okay. So here we are, we're looking at this, this variety. This is called Tropic Sweet. This is the one from the University of Florida here. These apples are actually small compared to what people get at the store. A um, Couple of reasons there. One is they were not thinned, which is why we have all this fruit all over the tree. And most, the other thing I wanna point out too is, you know, anytime like here we're growing stuff in Texas, uh, it's very warm, obviously it's really warm a lot hotter than normal and so that that time that the fruit has to develop is very short everything develops quickly so there's just not time to really put on put on size so this is not everything is bigger in texas not the fruit always anyway i appreciate that yeah i did not thin them either because uh one i knew i'd lose some fruit to birds and bitter rot and things like that and two i just didn't want to spend the time i spent my time thinning peaches i felt like that was going to be more important so let's move down the rows just a bit Next, we have a variety called Williams Pride. This one's got a higher chilling requirement, and you can see the fruit is actually quite a bit smaller. We have one there with some sort of blemish. What do we have? Bitter rot? Bitter rot. Insect, indu insect injury induced. Looks like, hey, got we a have, nice little critter coming I don't know out. If we can uh, get focused on that. Eh, let me back up a bit. Okay. So we have bitter rot there, and that is that is my largest or most significant problem here with these apples. So Williams Pride, um, I would say is, a, is on the higher chilling side, probably 
what I've seen uh, in uh, you know the literature is in the 500 to 7 800 hour range, which is within to slightly above what we get in College Station. For me, it's been pretty reliable as a fruiting uh, for fruiting, fairly synchronous, but it actually still probably has some flowers on it now. It does set fruit uh, over a pretty large part of the summer. One thing I would also add on about chilling is mm -hmm. that you know you go and look at what your average chilling accumulation is for your area like college station 600 to 650 but over the last 10 years we've gone anywhere from about 350 to 1100 hours and so that fluctuates a lot from year to year too all right so williams pride we don't have any color on it yet it turns red and actually i surprisingly get a lot of good color even though it's uh, very hot when it ripens i typically start picking in july uh, and continue to do so a few apples here and there throughout the fall. So next we have this variety called Joy, and I know fairly very little actually about the origin of Joy. I understand that it's been around a long time. Uh, I got it from Just Fruits and Exotics out of Florida, and um, from what I understand is perhaps that's where it's from. And my thinking was, if you can grow an apple in Florida without major, major disease problems, it might actually do fairly well for us here in Texas. So this fruit is actually starting to get ripe. Uh, it takes on a little bit of blush. Let me see if I can find one. These are, got decent blush. these are pretty green. Right here. All right, so that one in Dr. Hartman's hand is starting to take on some blush. We don't necessarily get great color here under this kind of heat. Okay. Especially this year. But this, this variety does have good flavor. Yeah, okay. we're, growing, we're growing fruit for flavor, not for color, not for appearance. Yeah, and this is backyard. You know, if we're talking commercial, it's a it's an entirely different story. This one is called Virginia Beauty, and it is a high chill variety. And we have fruit at different sizes in here. Because of that, we still have some small fruit. We might even be able to find a bloom or two on this variety. Um, fruit quality for me has not been great. Um, Again, this is just an experiment to try to find things that do well in the backyard, but we'll, we'll try it a couple more seasons before I rip it out. Things that don't perform well, I do rip out. Next, we have one called Shell, and if you can see those branches are weighed down with all the fruit. Probably should have thinned it. I've actually had some critters in here after my fruit, and when they get on the branches, it, it tends to snap them. So this is a variety out of Alabama, and apparently it's been around for uh, many years. It's very fruitful, very productive. Fruit quality has been pretty good, and actually, um, relative to some of these other varieties, I have not had as much bitter rot on it. Okay. Next is a variety called Hung or Hung, H-U-N-G-E. Another one of those old heirloom type varieties. It's fairly high chill. The flavor on it has been good, but it has thick skin, and I'm not terribly impressed with the quality. You'll notice too that just like pears, apples, a lot of the wood tends to grow. They tend to be very apically dominant, want to grow up. So it's not until you have fruit load that it starts actually pulling the limbs down more laterally. Yeah, if, if you can see, this is a very, the tree is very vertical versus the shell, which has been weighted down by all the fruit. And so with all that fruit load on there, now it's changed the growth habit of it. I actually do some tying to weigh them down or pull them down to uh, pull the branches horizontal. You can see one of those strings he just grabbed onto to try to increase the time to fruiting. So have lots of sharpshooters too. So that's a, that's just a new apple uh, right there that I've planted. So this is Anna right here. Anna is, is by far one of the most common and, and, and probably I would say one of the best adapted low chill apple varieties. Uh, it has some self fertility to it. It can set uh, without cross pollination, set some fruit, whereas most apples need cross pollination. Again, that's two different varieties blooming at the same time where they can transfer pollen to each other. Um, and this is one that I've, I've grown and been pretty happy with, but it's, it's like it's getting eaten up pretty well with uh, bitter rot. Yeah, if I, if I were going to pick one, I think it would probably be Anna. It's pretty reliable, but you can see that some of these fruit are rotten right here. So bitter rot starts off as this little brown spot, and it kind of sunken in, and you can see these little black specks inside of it. Uh, oh yeah, there it is on the bottom. You can see it's got major bitter rot mm -hmm. on the back side, the flat spot. And a lot of times, just with just like with brown rot, it, uh, it spreads very easily. Um, 
and can be exacerbated by insect feeding too because it, it usually does better if it has an entry point to it. Um, this has been a pretty dry year for us, obviously, so um, wouldn't expect to see quite as much disease. But I, I got I got it early on uh, when we actually had some moisture, and I did not apply any control, which is you know my uh, mistake or laziness, whichever one you want to pick. There are some products out there that have good activity. Um, a lot of them are, you know, less available or more difficult to come by. Captan is one that most people have available to them. The strobilurin fungicides also have activity, but you have to be careful because azoxystrobin in particular uh, can cause some phytotoxicity, so some problems in the plants. And I learned that lesson the hard way. So this is Anna. Uh, pretty compact, pretty spreading habit, a pretty nice variety. Another good thing about Anna is that, it's like Dr. Schneider mentioned, it will uh, normally bloom pretty early. It's estimated to be anywhere from about 250 to 400 chill hours. Again, these are estimates. So it'll come out and bloom pretty early, but oftentimes it'll, it'll fire off some, uh, some additional flowers from, from further down the stem as well. So a lot of times you'll get a couple uh, waves of flowers later on too. And this tree was absolutely loaded maybe a few weeks ago. We picked... Uh, you know, I don't know, maybe a five-gallon bucket or something off of this tree. So they can be pretty productive. All right, so we can we can skip down. That's that's another. We already we've already talked that variety. This is King David right here. Um, this bushy-looking thing that Dr. Hartman's standing next to. It's pretty high chill. You can see. Other thing you'll notice, there's not a lot of bud break. You have bud break at the at the shoot tip, and then all these buds they never got their sleep, so they never woke up basically. So this variety has not been a winner at all for me. It produces fruit that ripens probably around October. I mean, that's kind of nice having an apple around October. It's pretty hard. The skin's pretty thick. So uh, I'm not terribly impressed with that variety. So we'll skip down to one last variety to talk about. This one is called Smith. This is another one of those heirloom varieties that's been around quite a while in the south. And uh, it's low chill. Whoops, there you're dropping fruit on the ground. It's ready. <laughs> so it is ready. And Dr. Hartman just took a nice bite. What do you think? This one's a little, uh, a little past, but it's good. Yeah, that is one challenge here in the hot, in the heat, is when you have them, uh, when the apples ripen, they can get mealy pretty quick. The there are, goes down quickly. And there are a couple of varieties I tried that I just ripped out because the quality of the fruit turned out to be uh, really bad. Reverend Morgan was one. Even though it's uh, supposedly from a seedling uh, uh, from Reverend Morgan out of Houston, Texas. So I thought, surely it must be adapted to this area. It grew, it produced apples. They were late. The quality just wasn't there, so I, I ripped it out. I had another one called Bevan's Favorite. It definitely was not my favorite. Ripped it out. Aunt Rachel, uh, among a few others. So let's try a couple more of these, and then you can, uh, you can pick the, the best. So we did a little tasting earlier in the day. We tasted uh, Anna, we tasted Shell, we tasted Smith, Tropic Sweet, and I'm missing one that we tasted. And I'll tell you, Smith, Smith Tropic Sweet, Joy, and we also oh, okay. tasted Joy. And I'll tell you uh, which ones were the favorites after you go ahead and taste through them, Dr. Hartman, and give us your expert opinion. So Smith, one out of five rating. Got to get a big enough sample size. <laughs> He's looking for the perfect apple. Okay. Pretty good. That's joy. Maybe you can find one with a little blush. You know, the thing is with bitter rot, even though it's it's ugly and you lose part of the apple, the rest of the apple is still edible. Yeah. So you you can cut around it. Definitely lower acid. So joy was lower acid. So, so if we're if we're talking low acid, high acid. So you can think of like uh, Granny Smith is high acid, which I'm not a fan. There's not a lot of sweetness versus say a Gala or Honey Crisp, or honey crisp something something like that. So King David has no fruit. We're going back. We have Tropic Sweet. Those are that's a tiny tree. Maybe you should try it from a. Try. You can. Low acid too, kind of cool. A little oh. bland though. 
Floral, bland, low acid, okay, okay. So the deal is these apples were selected to be eating apples, not cider apples, not necessarily processing apples. There's some old varieties like yellow transparent, which are, you know, you primarily used for pies and things like that. But I wanted something you could eat out of hand. That's Anna. That one looked a little green, but that was the flavor. It's good. Good? All right, we're almost done with the uh, taste off here. All right, back to Shell. I'm not going to bias you, even though this is one of my favorites. Shell's pretty good, and I haven't tried it before. I'm pretty impressed with it. I like Shell myself. All right, you already tasted Joy. And now we're back to the starting point, to Tropic Sweet. Now, I don't know how many ripe Tropic Sweets you're going to be able to find, so this may not be quite a fair comparison. We just picked a lot of Tropic Sweet yesterday and today. Pretty lower acid, but... I think I'm still... Uh, I would definitely say... Uh, I would definitely say Shell or Anna. Shell or Anna, there you have it. Okay, so My low, opinion. low chill apples. Those, those are actually ranked high as well in the taste test we did earlier with, uh, with, with some of our graduate students in our viticulture and program who, who do have some experience with sensory evaluation. So the, I think all the varieties are probably decent. Um, there are a couple of other low chill varieties that I do not have that maybe you can comment on. Uh, say Ein Shimmer. Yeah, I've only had a few of them, but I, I wasn't too impressed with the fruit quality, personally, with that and the flavor. I have not heard anything positive about the, the quality of that variety, which is why I didn't plant it. Uh, I'm also missing uh, Dorset. Like gold, I and mean, then Fuji can be fairly fairly low chill, kind of low to, to medium chill as well. So, uh, And if you want more info on apples, growing apples, you can check out our website at aggie-horticulture.tamu.edu. We have a fact sheet on apples, and we have some varieties listed in there that I do not have uh, that have high quality potential. So again, when I was selecting varieties, I was purely just looking at disease resistance and low Molly's chill varieties. Is a good one too. So Molly's delicious, and then there's some others you might uh, you might give a try. So if you're interested in apples, give it a shot. Just know that this is not the easiest fruit to grow. There are some problems that you have to be ready to uh, deal with. Don't, don't expect uh, large fruit, don't expect really colorful fruit. We're looking for flavor, we're looking for, for yeah, just, just good eating fruit, not necessarily good to look at.